Hey folks, this is Ken Grimes, the City Administrator for the City of Orange Beach, and we're bringing you today the Winter 2021 Winter Update. Uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about a lot of projects that are going on in the City of Orange Beach. Uh, we felt like this was the best way to virtually bring you up to speed and show you a lot of activities happening, uh, a lot of our investments that are going on and talk a little bit about what we've uh, gone through here in 2020. So this is uh, intended to bring you up to speed as we start the 2021 year. And uh, for the most part, uh, the images that you'll see are the latest and greatest and uh, where we are at this point in time. So hopefully this will help our property owners, help our local residents that might need some more information and just anyone in general. So, uh, so here we go. Let's talk about well, what we're facing. Uh, we came out of a very successful uh, election series this year with the uh, municipal uh, folks and uh, Mayor Tony Kennan and our city council. Uh, all six people were re-elected to serve for another four-year term. So uh, we're, we're pleased with that. Uh, one change that has occurred is Jeff Boyd is now our chairman pro tem. So he is the chairman pro tem, also known as the mayor pro tem. And uh, so he'll be working uh, more diligently with Mayor Kennan as we approach some of these projects. Uh, from a financial standpoint, I'll just tell you quickly that we've had great leadership and we've continued to pay down our debt and uh, we're in the final year of our existing debt and yet the council has just moved forward in approving a $50 million bond issue. That's five zero fifty million, and that bond uh, issue will go out and will enable us to do a lot of the upcoming projects that we're going to tell you about right now. But uh, very, very good fiscal management and a lot of activities related to paying cash for things and being very scrupulous with the money. So proud of what we've accomplished. In 2020, uh, the issues that were some challenges that everyone faced, and specifically uh, the COVID-19 came out around March. And as we look back on that period of time in the first of the year, um, our governor, Governor Ivey, uh, had to close the beaches down. And because of the sheer large gatherings that occur in the beaches during that period of time, so we were closed from about March 19th to April 30th and uh, working through that, that impacted a lot of our resort business and a lot of the accommodation providers who extended their closures uh, into uh, the next month of May. So it put the city uh, losing spring break and losing our spring season and uh, kind of coming into Memorial Day, uh, we were kind of in the hole about $4 million in revenues and we began to work our way out as the summer went on. Um, you can see images where the beaches were just completely barren during that time and normally the spring break period of time is a really active time for families. A lot of people are here and uh, as our winter guests have vacated, uh, it's, a, it's a complete transition before we hit Memorial Day in the summer traffic. So it's always kind of interesting. Fast forward, uh, going through all of the changes with COVID on September 16th, 2020, Hurricane Sally hits us and it's uh, basically was another direct hit. And ironically, it was 16 days to the day, uh, 16 years to the day that Hurricane Ivan got us back in 2004. And much of the damage was eerily similar. We had over 30 inches of rainfall during a uh, very, very tough night. Uh, the difference in this, we did not have an evacuation order. The storm was not expected to grow in strength as it did, but uh, a good bit of damage occurred. And as we uh, began to respond to that, uh, I'm real proud of Mayor Kenna and the council, our, our uh, EMA, our key staff, and all of our residents along with the debris contractors. Uh, for several months we've worked very hard and we've been able to get our city back up and running and many people can't even tell in many ways that we've been through a major hurricane uh, as they come into town for the first time. And uh, some, of the, some of the images and memories are things that just show the uh, resilience of Orange Beach and we're very proud of all of our folks and uh, it's, it's been a very, very tough year going not only through the pandemic and the issues that we faced with tourism, but also through uh, Hurricane Sally and uh, the recovery process from a major hurricane. So we are very fine-tuned with that and continue to work on. A couple places, just so you will know, that are still damaged that have not been repaired uh, and uh, probably won't be repaired in the first quarter are our waterfront pier uh, at uh, Waterfront Park. The Orange Beach Waterfront Pier was damaged severely and you can see uh, it's going to take a total rebuild and that process uh, will be underway soon but it will not be uh, totally fast. And then also the Seawall Park at Alabama Point. It's a great gathering spot there by the Perdido Pass Bridge. 
uh, near the Gulf, uh, Gulf restaurant. And this is a great thing, but the seawall itself is intact, but the uh, boardwalks and all of the dune features and some of the other amenities were damaged by the water that came in pretty strong. So, so coming out of that, it was a tough 2020, but uh, let's talk about some of the positives that have occurred and what is underway now. Again, I, I expressed how resilient and how proud we are of the Orange Beach community. And we were able in August to open the Orange Beach High School and our middle school, which are the same complex. And so we are now home of the Makos. And uh, we cut a ribbon on that. Uh, this is a partnership with Baldwin County Board of Education. And the City of Orange Beach and Baldwin County Board of Education have worked diligently to create, hopefully, what will become one of the best high schools, not only in the county, but in the state, and hopefully in the nation as we move forward. And the Makos have had a very successful year uh, so far under many challenges dealing with what they face with uh, the COVID related mandates and uh, continue to do well with not only their academics, their athletics and the arts. And we're real proud of them for a lot of their accomplishments in this very first year. Uh, the biggest and largest project that we have underway in a capital investment standpoint is the Performing Arts Center. And this is on campus and attached to the, the high school. And the Performing Arts Center is basically a 35,000 35, square foot facility which includes several key components in the arts. One is the, uh, the main theater and the main theater itself is 710 seats and it has a very large full Full, fully functional uh, stage with everything that you have with the fly system. It's going to have sound and light that's of the greatest technology and we are uh, moving ahead with those issues in the arts. Uh, added to that, we had some delays as we made final decisions. Includes a black box theater and a dance classroom which uh, was another investment but the uh, partnership really keeps it for the city of Orange Beach around 10 million dollars is what our investment is. The additional dollars come in from the Baldwin County Board that covered the band and choir rooms which they were obligated to build. And so we're really excited. This is not only a project that for, for many generations to come will impact the ability for us to have shows and performances and any kind of activity, but it will serve well for the school as they are able to have uh, assemblies and gatherings uh, in a first class facility uh, like this. So, and you can see the location is uh, there at the school campus, uh, which is not too far from the wharf, which is our primary landmark in town on that end. So when we gave the 40 acres as a city to the Baldwin County Board, it forced us to move several of our key facilities on that property. And one of those is the new public works facility. And you can see uh, we've moved to the northwest corner of the city. This facility is uh, unique for us because it brings all the divisions within public works, such as uh, landscape, street department, uh, building maintenance, custodial, refuse, everything will now be under one roof and it will give us a lot of efficiencies. Uh, this new facility is located just behind Baldwin EMC and Columbia Southern on the Beach Express and uh, it's really a first class facility and it gives us a lot of indoor storage that we've never had and uh, all of our equipment will be protected for the taxpayers so hopefully we'll get more life out of facility uh, equipment and a lot of our vehicles which will be out of that salt air on a regular basis so we're really excited about the new public works facility the uh, also another facility had to be relocated and and uh, moved was the utilities office which used to be on the campus and so we have relocated the utilities office. It is uh, near completion and we also have a warehouse building behind that that had to be relocated. So both of those are now closer to the wastewater treatment plant which is just west of the sportsplex and south of the school. And so that is, a, that is a good addition for the city to actually get that back onto the same property as the wastewater treatment plant. So that new utilities office is, uh, is kind of back there and it's, it's a really good investment. We're taking the old utility office and we're making an addition and you can see the map there at the school property site and the new is going to be the athletic field house. Uh, this is a start. Uh, it's not the glorified athletic field house that one day we'll hopefully have that will serve all the needs, but this will give them a workout facility, uh, some showers and bathroom facilities, and basically on campus a place for the athletic uh, programs to do their workouts and to be on campus in a better environment that is theirs. And that's at the old utility office, uh, which is there on William Silver's, now part of the 40 acres that we gave to the school. So moving to some other projects, uh, we've got a variety of, of capital investments. 
probably one of the most unique for us that most cities will not have is the Coastal Resources Office. Uh, from moving down to uh, just to the east of Sportsman's Marina, uh, we have this new Coastal Resources Office. is kind of a place where not only can we continue with our shoreline equipment vessels, and the other activities that they need to manage but uh, it's using a piece of city property that was bought many years ago and hopefully for the best use because we have the basin that is there near the sportsman's marina so the city is doing that and in addition to the building itself we're going to continue into building uh, various boat slips uh, which will handle very large vessels and this is where we will house the future fire vessel that is uh, underway in construction and being built to be delivered later this year uh, our current location had been closer off of Walker Avenue, but those uh, docks at that marina had been damaged. And so now we're going to make this the permanent home for the fire vessel, which is not very far from Station 2. So when they have a response on the water, the Fire Station 2 guys will be able to respond quickly and get onto that vessel. So it's a very unique project on the water and, and it looks very coastal. So we're real proud that it's, uh, it's gonna be a nice addition for something that's very unique and most cities again would never have these kind of activities with our shoreline program and the beach ambassadors and all the activities that they take care of, including wildlife, which we'll talk about in a second. The uh, recreation additions, uh, let's start with the new 24 seven adult fitness center. Uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, this is a facility that you can go in with a swipe card and use to work out. This facility is actually because of the popularity and growth that occurred with our recreation center and the adult activities with the fitness room that had just really been so popular that we needed more space. So this is a 17,000 uh, plus square foot facility. Um, lots of activity with two workout cardio rooms. Uh, we'll have uh, saunas in the each men's and women's locker room. And basically, like I said, 24 seven, it, it will have every piece of equipment you can think of to work out and to get the cardio that you need. And it's just uh, excellent facility for us. And uh, we still maintain a, a annual membership is $75 a year. And I think for a family that's uh, somewhere in the 175 range. So it's an excellent deal. Hard to beat that anywhere. Most places charge that per month uh, for the type activities you get at our rec center. Uh, from the aerial, you can see the construction underway. And then that transitions us to the new small gym, which is attached to the current gym at the rec center. This year we were able to complete construction on the small gymnasium and the main thing that does is it gives us a lot of room for our children's activities with the Expect Excellence program and our Rec League programs but it also gives us three additional pickleball courts and we know for our winter guests that's become very popular and uh, as an indoor facility we'll now be able to have six uh, regulation size pickleball courts along with the other activities and most of that happens during the day before three o'clock and that is before the kids get out of school. So we wanna encourage you, if you are a participant, know that you gotta get out of there by three because then there will be somewhere between two and 300 students arrive and uh, that's always fun and I'm sure you'd like to go home and get cleaned up from your pickleball game. So as we move forward, we were able to upgrade on the same campus of the rec center, our Orange Beach Tennis Center. Uh, our courts, our eight hard courts have now been resurfaced and rebuilt completely. So hopefully from a, drainage standpoint and from a play standpoint you'll have uh, the best uh, experience playing tennis and you can see the mako blue is is there as the color and we're real proud of this facility and while we were able to do that because of these new buildings on the campus we're also upgraded our drainage project and that uh, actually drains out to the north of the elementary school so all of that is now able to carry the stormwater in a much much better fashion and all that's on the campus there at the orange beach recreation center as we shift from the tennis center, let's talk a little bit more about uh, what's happening with our recreation facilities and we'll go to the Orange Beach Sportsplex where we're making some major upgrades. Uh, we're starting with our baseball and softball fields for the Makos. Uh, we needed regulation size ball fields and we had to make some additions. So we've already changed the lighting on the Mako baseball field, which is field two. And uh, field three is the softball field. Each of these stadiums will now be built, so the grandstands will house uh, 500 for baseball, 400 for softball, and uh, our plans are that they will be open for the season, but due to some weather issues and the hurricane and some delays with COVID on manufacturers of products, we're going to do our best to push for that, and uh, hopefully the Makos will have some awesome home fields as we move forward. 
That's the first upgrade, and then we're working with the championship soccer field and the conversion of using our current soccer field to become the Mako football field. All of this is in the works, and we're working closely with the Southeastern Conference and the NAIA championships, which both want to be here in the fall of the year. Um, that lower soccer field that used to be used just for practice will now become the championship soccer field and the current soccer field will become the football field and so as we transition these uh, you'll see that work going on at 2021 which is very close to the uh, the backcountry trail entrance at the sportsplex and that trailhead so bear with us as we go through all of those upgrades because the parking lots are impacted by lay down yards and equipment so we apologize in advance if you use that trailhead but it's great improvements for our schools and for our rec leagues working through that uh, let's talk public safety for a few minutes uh, we've got a lot of activity now which would be part of that 50 million dollar bond issue to allow us to go ahead and move forward with these capital improvements fire station number one uh, the campus of fire station number one which is located behind city hall near the post office uh, that project is going to include a new station, upgrades and some renovations to some existing facilities and probably some changes on the campus to best utilize and make that the most efficient. Uh, along with that, Fire Station 5 will have a new construction going on near the wharf. Fire Station 5 has basically been housed in temporary buildings at the wharf and now we'll have a permanent station on Canal Road just uh, off of that, just east of the wharf and near Powerline Road. Those two upgrades for fire really bring an addition because the council has approved for a new ladder truck in 2021 to be purchased as well as the third ambulance for our transport business. And so as we transport patients, uh, this is all part of the best uh, public safety that we can provide, especially when it comes to health care and through our fire department. Municipal Court will probably be uh, changed as well as we talk about the Justice Center. Uh, the Justice Center is the home of the Orange Beach Police Department and they have continued to grow and as we have expanded uh, with the need for more uh, officers and more equipment, uh, we need more room in the Justice Center. So there will be some improvements happening there at the uh, facility uh, just north of City Hall across from McDonald's. Let's talk about uh, one of the main projects everyone's interested in is canal road widening and this is from uh, 161 west to the wharf. Uh, if you've not been here uh, this year, we actually have five lanes underway now. They're continuing to add the southern width where they will add the additional lanes. And uh, the last step that will be happening over the next uh, four or five months will be the widening will happen and then the resurfacing and restriping. And we'll actually have five lanes that will take you in and traffic is moving great. Uh, even during construction, it's been moving very well and it's helped us tremendously during peak weekends. So we're really excited about the canal road widening. We also had four neighborhood improvements that are connected to Canal Road and we'll go from east to west. The driveway at the Commons uh, was one that was widened to allow people into that. We have a lot of restaurant activity uh, there in the Commons Shopping Center. We move on down to the Lauder Lane. This is more of a residential turnout lane that will help the residents get in and out easily with a right turnout instead of having to wait on everyone to turn left. Uh, at the same time, we had some upgrades in the area of Gulf Bay Road, and the city went ahead and included the sidewalk project that got the road, uh, the sidewalk, from Canal Road North to the Gulf Bay Road 90 degree turn. So the residents down there now have access and they can do a much safer walk up the road to some of the restaurants and activities. And then the fourth project is at Cypress Village with a desail lane that will turn into going westbound into Cypress Village. Uh, with that widening, uh, they had lost that ability to turn and so that will help them with a much safer access off of the road and into their neighborhood directly in front of Orange Beach High School. So those four projects have been supported by the city and uh, ALDOT worked with us as long as we were able to get those done during this project. So it's been very good. Canal Road East, uh, east of 161, also known as the East of Docks uh, restaurant. Uh, this is a project that's been uh, in the mix for a while. ALDOT uh, had worked with the city and the city is now the owners of the road. And uh, so we'll be widening that road using restore funds that came from the BP oil spill. And some of those restore funds will help us not only with the roundabout circle that'll be near the art center, but it'll also take it all the way to Wilson Boulevard for those who go to the elementary school. And so that will give us uh, some, some ability for traffic to flow more smoothly during those 
uh, peak times of school and for people to have the ability to move. Uh, also, there are the multimodal paths that are being finalized in design, and that will actually give us the ability for golf carts, pedestrians, and bikers to be able to traverse on Canal Road East to a lot of our neighborhoods and get back to the shopping areas that they desire to get to. So this uh, multimodal project with the pathways is being included, and that will take you all the way down into the Bear Point community uh, when they are completed. So the city is investing in that. An exciting project that has just begun and has just went public is basically the beach development at 161 and Perdido Beach Boulevard. And this includes the citizen beach access. Um, basically 8.7 acres of beachfront undeveloped land uh, is basically in a real estate transaction now. There is a proposed restaurant that could be as much as three stories tall and it would be modeled after a restaurant that has had good success in the 30A of Florida uh, stretch of beach. And working with that, the city will have a clear title to 400 feet of beachfront, but access to 800 feet of beachfront. And we're working with that so residents of, of the city will actually have access uh, via a system of pay cards or what that will get you in and out of the parking lot during the peak seasons when it's very difficult to go to the beach. So there's a lot of exciting things coming and just stay tuned for more information on that new beach development access, which is right at the end of 161 at the beach highway. Moving forward, uh, there's a couple of projects that are underway. Uh, we're gonna be replacing the kids park pier, as I mentioned from the damage, but we're also gonna be replacing the playground. And so the kids park playground uh, that is one that was having major deterioration before Hurricane Sally came through and then after Hurricane Sally we had some additional damage and so the the playground will be replaced uh, in the near future and it has had to take a back burner due to some other projects that were just in line ahead of it especially since Hurricane Sally. Another project is a restore uh, funded project and this is the sea turtle triage facility. This is a facility that will basically uh, be covered, a covered building with some tanks that will be a way to triage the sea turtles when they are found and injured in our waters of the Alabama Gulf Coast. Uh, Coastal Resources does a great job with animals, but they'll be able to get these turtles into these tanks and begin the process until they can be picked up and delivered to the hospitals where they need to go for full recovery and rehab. So that's a restore project that'll be unique to Orange Beach. We also have a new wildlife center that uh, is underway and that is going to be located down off Powerline Road, not very far from our trailhead at, uh, at Gulf Oak Ridge. And so basically the wildlife center is going to give the staff that goes and collects mostly birds that are injured, uh, usually it's some sort of a broken wing or broken leg or fishing line. Uh, all kind of things with fish hooks. So always remember when you're doing anything in our environment that the animals are also subject to that product. So take your monofilament line and dispose of that. Try to get rid of your fish hooks properly, etc. Because all of our wildlife are injured and so we're trying to do a good job in being stewards of that environment and the wildlife. So that facility will help them and that is a heavily restore funded project through those BP funds as well. There are plans to relocate the trailhead at Rattlesnake Ridge. This is uh, just south of City Hall. Currently that trailhead goes in very close to the fire uh, station one and the administration building of fire, uh, fire admin. Uh, it's just a dangerous intersection and we want to relocate that down in front of City Hall. So that'll actually be underway in 2021 for all of you who come. So more than likely in the future you'll park in front of City Hall and go into the trailhead and it'll be very convenient to uh, enter the trail system there. A couple of programs that are we're continuing and very proud of. Uh, the Expect Excellence program is something that I mentioned earlier and we do with our, our youth. Uh, and this starts now in the very, very early grades of the elementary school and works its way into the middle and high school. And so what we're doing is giving the kids a well-rounded experience of training in the academics, arts, and athletics. Uh, that includes everything from music to learning the arts and getting involved. This is all how we're doing a grassroots program to get ready for not only the facilities we've mentioned at our sportsplex, but the Performing Arts Center along with our Coastal Arts Center and how hopefully we'll be, uh, we'll be grooming some future artists and athletes and in all cases helping their uh, academic experience to be the best it can for hopefully scholarships in the future. Along with that, we are trying to continue our continuing excellence, and this started a year ago, 
So you may be interested in some of the programs through Continuing Excellence. Uh, this includes everything from some computer classes, uh, culinary arts, nutrition and wellness. Uh, talk about a lot with what I mentioned with the other programs with the visual arts and including dance. I know uh, they're very popular right now with the dance classes and even writing and poetry. So as, a, as an adult, uh, this is something to look into and you can find out more on that on our website with Continuing Excellence. Just a few reminders for everyone. It doesn't matter what time of year you're here, but especially uh, especially in the spring and summer. But our Leave Only Footprints program is in place and has been very successful in asking people to take their belongings every evening. Uh, one hour bef uh, after sunset, everything is being removed. And uh, very, it's just basically part of cleaning the beach. And uh, this image is one that's always the easiest to show the before and after. Uh, same condominium in the background and you can see what it used to be. It has not been that way for five years and we're real proud working with the Fish and Wildlife program that we're proactively addressing our beaches and making it much safer for all to enjoy, including the wildlife, that that is their habitat. We have a motto of we uh, want to be the Disney effect. We want to have a clean, safe area. We want to have things and you can, you can imagine with our tree lighting events like you see in the image and the festivals and activities, uh, we're continuing to do the best we can to make that possible in the city of Orange Beach so people know there's a different feel. And so uh, this has been a motto of Mayor Kennan uh, all along and uh, we're continuing to invest in the clean and safe community. Uh, along with that, we have received many rankings and continue to receive rankings on safety. So uh, we're proud of our police and fire and all of our activity that goes with maintaining that safe community. And uh, there's just a lot of ways that we're trying to be transparent. So just like this video, we're asking you if you will look and sign up for the community newsletter. Uh, every Friday, a newsletter goes out digitally and uh, you can see the latest and greatest information that's going on in the city of Orange Beach, Alabama. So with all this being said, as we talk about not only the future of Orange Beach and we talk about what we're accomplishing in 2020, uh, this has been an exciting year and it's been a challenging year. And let me just say on behalf of Mayor Tony Kennan and our city council members, uh, our staff and all of our citizens, uh, we know that a lot of people have had a very difficult time in 2020. Uh, we know from an employee standpoint, from a health standpoint, a lot of people have uh, had the worst situation of lo losing loved ones and we just extend our prayers and sympathy out because we're all in this together and we're constantly trying to do what we can to keep people safe. So we just encourage you to uh, know that we're here for you. If you need help, call City Hall at 251-981-6979 whether related to the virus, whether related to the hurricane uh, recovery. So if you have made it through this entire 30 minute video and you are still there, we hope that you've enjoyed this and we hope that it's been helpful for you. We appreciate you looking at being here back in Orange Beach, continuing to live here, continuing to work here, and hopefully coming here in the future. So again, Ken Grimes, City Administrator, bringing you an opportunity for this winter update. And so thank you for listening. Life is better here. Have a great day.